Today I have four photos for a single page spread and I've planned to use the board, one of the borders that I made recently with my Creative Memories border maker system. I'm Emily and you've found Emily's Paper Caper where we're all about scrapping our stash and getting pages done. If you're new here, I hope you'll consider subscribing. Hit the subscribe button and bell icon now. For my page title, I'm going to say Tiger Lilies and Giant Hibiscus. The Giant Hibiscus are my favorite flower each year. I think they're all my favorites, but I just think they're amazing. These blooms are as big as a dinner plate. So they're quite gorgeous. And I picked red and orange papers to complement these photos. I'm using a stamp set. I don't know the manufacturer, but this is a cute dot letter alphabet stamp. And believe it or not, it was on the free table at a crop a number of years ago. And I have been enjoying using it a lot lately. I don't remember where I got this little container that I'm keeping them in. I think the container was designed for these daubers, but I've found that I use this alphabet set a lot more if I have them ready to go. And this is a little container that I can just keep really, really conveniently. It's called Mimi Memories in Motion but I have no idea where I got this or when. It's probably been over 10 years ago. Now that I have my page title, I do have limited room for the four photos, so I will have to find a way to overlap some of the photos. And then this one, I'm going to trim a little bit to make a little more room on the page. And then for my background, this is a very thin piece of paper and I wanted to have it a little more sturdy. So I'm gonna use this as the base and then I'm gonna trim about a half inch off one side, off, well, off of two edges to make this fit nicely on the background. I'll have a nice red frame around the page by doing this. Now this is such a nice high quality paper that I think I'll gut the center so that I can stretch that paper a little bit. I'm just going to eyeball leave a couple inches around the outside. This way I don't feel like I'm wasting this beautiful high quality red paper just covering most of it up. And so I'll use this on a future page as well as the scraps that I cut off that orange paper. Now 
Now I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to arrange the photos, but I do have a couple of nice mats ready to go. Here's one my mom's posing. I think I like this solid. It's not solid, but get on this green. And then I will place the other photo on the other mat. To make those photos stand out a little bit more, I'm going to use some photo corners. The busy mats behind them. I don't want the photos to get lost on top of these mats. I probably should have used a solid mat, but it's okay. There, I feel like that makes the photo stand out a bit more. By overlapping the photos and letting some page elements fall off the edge of the page, I have more room to give everything to get all of these elements on this page. These are adhesive photo mats, so they go down super quick and easy. I have a video about photo mat options. I'll link to that up in the card. I do like the look of photo mats on my pages. Now that everything is adhered, I can trim this excess. I do want to add a date to this page. These photos were taken in July. Some folks have asked me about this holder on my desktop. It's actually a makeup brush holder. So here's a makeup brush that I purchased, but I'm using it for scrapbooking. So it's meant to hold your brushes, but I've found it's great for holding my scissors, some stickles, other tools, pens, tweezers and it just makes a real convenient holder for on my desktop. I found this at a store called Five Below 
for five dollars and I enjoy having it on my desktop and keeping my most used tools handy. <laughs>